Hello, everyone. Welcome to the BI Connector webinar. My name is Mary Castillo, and I'm a marketing manager for BI Connector. The topic for today's webinar is seven best practices for connecting Power BI to OBIE. I am joined by Shankar Radhakrishnan, CEO and co-founder, who is the presenter of this webinar. I will now hand it over to Shankar, who will start the webinar. Thank you, Mary. Welcome to the webinar. My name is Shankar Radhakrishnan. I'm the CEO of Guidance and co-founder of BI Connector. Today, we will talk about how to efficiently integrate Power BI to your existing OBIE data warehouse. Users who are adopting Power BI as the visual analysis tool quickly realize that connecting it to their OBI data is not so easy. In this webinar, we will discuss the techniques used by organizations that have successfully integrated Power BI with their OBI environment. A quick introduction to BI Connector. BI Connector was launched in 2015. It was specifically designed for large and medium-sized organizations to integrate Tableau, Power BI, and Click to OBIE. We are based in San Francisco Bay Area. We are a technology partner of Microsoft, Oracle, and Tableau, and we work closely with the tool vendors in the ongoing development of BI Connector. Let's start by looking at the top reasons for power, connecting Power BI to OBI. From an end user perspective, users find Power BI much easier to use compared to OBI. If they need to combine OBI data with other data sources, the time to visualization is much faster. Sometimes it could just be because simply because the company has chosen Power BI as a standard tool for visualization. But if OBI is the existing BI platform, users spend four to five hours per week on an average to export, import, and wrangle the OBI data into Power BI. Conservatively, this, the productivity loss is around $10,000 per user per year based on this amount of effort that is taken used to bring the OBI data into Power BI. The IT teams, on the other hand, have invested millions of dollars in OBIE. If the IT teams have to duplicate the OBI semantic model, the business logic, and the aggregations in Power BI, it would cost a minimum of $250,000 for each subject area in time and material. So reusing the data warehouse that you've already built is a very prudent approach. Okay, when you connect from Power BI to OBI as a data source, you will face some unique challenges. First of all, it is not fair to compare OBI to a data source such as Excel or SQL Server. OBI is a lot more complex system. It is a complete BI solution where the data volumes are huge. It has a well-defined data warehouse schema with complex joins and aggregations. On top of that, hundreds of users, hundreds if not thousands of users could be running intensive reports. The query performance is often unpredictable and depends on the system load. So what steps can you take to efficiently connect Power BI to OBI? So based on our extensive experience in working with a number of enterprise customers who are using OBIE with the modern visualization tools. We have identified seven best practices that will make it easy for you to visualize OBI data in Power BI. The seven best practices are know your OBI, start with reports, choose the right connection type, use filters, use GZID for subject areas, fine tune for long running and large queries, focusing on them. And finally, implement the data security in the cloud. We will review the, each one of these topics in detail now. So let's start with the first best practice, know your OBI. A common problem that we have seen is that Power BI users who are most eager to access the OBI data often have limited knowledge of what OBI is, how it works, what the subject areas do, and how OBI performs. While uh, BI Connector has made it simple to access the OBI subject areas and reports, the complexity of OBI is still very relevant. Just dragging and dropping columns in Power BI without an understanding of the subject areas could easily lead to frustration. So what we recommend is that the initial set of users who are connecting Power BI with OBI should be super users of both OBI and Power BI. They need to know the OBI model and the data that they are planning to access. 
We recently published a white paper, how to get started with the BI connector evaluation that discusses the need for forming a core team who can, who have the expertise on both OBI and Power BI, and also who can identify the right use cases for integrating Power BI to OBI. So I strongly recommend that you review that white paper when you embark on this journey of integrating Power BI to OBI. So once you identify your core team and use cases for the first few Power BI reports, you should keep the Power BI and OBI side by side. So first run the report or analysis in OBI, understand the subject area, folders, columns, filters, and the total number of records that are in the report. No doubt the query performance when fetching the entire data for the report. So not just the first 75 rows that is displayed in the first page of OBI, but actually the whole data set that you are going to get for a particular query in the OBI. Next, connect to that report or analysis in the same environment from Power BI using BI Connector. Create the visualizations and compare the results, the data as well as the time taken to get the data from OBI into Power BI. It's important to keep them side by side to understand and uh, start familiarizing yourself with how Power BI, how to integrate, how to get the data in Power BI from OBI. The second best practice is to start with the OBI reports. When you connect from Power BI to OBI, you have two options. You can either connect to OBI reports or to the subject areas. For Power BI, we recommend starting with OBI reports since it's the easiest of two. You would be reusing the existing OBI reports and there is no need to rebuild all the aggregations, etc., in Power BI. Even if a data set that you need doesn't exist as a report in OBI, we, for the first few reports, we recommend you create it first in OBI, then connect to it from Power BI and access it as a table. So if you're wondering why we are recomm not recommending connecting to the subject areas directly, hold on for a few minutes and we will discuss it later in this presentation. So the next best practice is to choose the right connection type for your analysis. When you use BI Connector, there are two connection types that are available to you, direct query and import. If your OBI queries and reports perform well, that is the data is fetched within the reasonable time period. And if you're looking to minimize the data duplicated into Power BI, we recommend that you use direct query. Direct query offers a live online query access to the OBI data. On the other hand, if your OBI queries and reports are slow, and if you'd like to use Power BI's in-memory database for faster visualization, you should consider the import option. This will bring the OBI data into Power BI and allow you to analyze the data offline. So in either case, when the connection type for your OBI data source is different from the connection type for your other data sources, and if you're bringing them together in a single report, be sure to verify that the composite model option works for you. Otherwise, you would have to use the same connection type for all your data sources. The fourth best practice is simple. It's use filters. This is a very important topic you need to manage the volume of data that you're querying from OBI. So your OBI reports could be running for several minutes and sometimes your query queries could also, if it's very intensive, it could also bring the OBI system to its knees. So if you are using direct query, it is important to use filters before you start visualizing the data. That is even before you drag and drop the fields into the report canvas, you should apply the filters first. On the other hand, if you're using import, it is important to apply the filters before you load the data into Power BI. Otherwise, you could be loading millions of records from your OBI into Power BI for a single query, and your query could be running for several minutes to hours. So always use filters, such as either time dimension filters or any other dimension filters to, minima to focus on the narrow down the data that you're bringing from OBI into Power BI. So, before we review the remaining uh, best practices, let's go through the first four best practices through a quick live demo of connecting to OBI reports. So I've installed BI Connector Desktop Edition on this machine, which is a prerequisite. So 
can get to BI Connector by launching the ODBC Data Source Administrator panel. Once in that, you have created DSNs to connect to the OBI. So if you see, notice here, we have created uh, four DSNs, two of them pointing to a single specific area. For example, the OBI dev report and the OBI subject area point to the dev area where one is for the reports and the other one is for the subject area. So let me open the OBI dev report. So you can see the data source name and description. And this is the URL, the OBI URL that I'm going to connect to. This is the same URL that you would use in your browser to connect to your OBI and the port information. The user ID and the password is, this, is your OBI credential. That's the connection. Okay, so it's test connection is successful. Now uh, we have chosen the data source type of reports, manage report list. Click on manage report list. This shows the catalog folders or the specific reports that you want to make available from OBI into Power BI. So you might have thousands of reports in OBI, thousands of folders, catalog folders. Not all of them may be needed in Power BI and it'll take a huge amount of time to load the metadata for all those reports into Power BI. So BI Connector provides an efficient way to just narrow down the specific folders and reports that you want to make available in Power BI. So in this case, I have chosen shared Northwind and shared BI Connector European order specifically. And I've also included my folder report. So any user who logs in with their OBI credential will see their reports in Power BI. So once you do this, save it, save it and close. So we'll take a quick look at the subject area also. The only difference here is that the data source type is subject areas instead of reports. That's all the one, the key differences. So with that, now let's go jump to the Power BI. And the way to connect to OBI is to do get data and you will see BI connector as one of the certified connectors in Power BI. So click on connect. Here you would enter the DSN corresponding to the reports that we configured. So let's choose direct query. Click OK. So this is going to ask for the OBI credentials. It's connecting to the catalog folder and bringing up the list of reports that are now available to me. So those reports that are in the Northwind folder, as well as the specific report, the shared BI connector European orders are available. So let's choose the European orders report. So you will see a quick preview of the data. So in the case of direct query, you can click on load because keep in mind when you use direct query, the data is not immediately loaded into Power BI, but only the metadata is loaded. So it's going to load the metadata for the reports as a table. So now we can see the columns under the European orders available here. So the first step as we discussed earlier is to apply the filter. So I don't, this report could be having, you know, thousands or hundreds of thousands of rows. So let's apply a filter based on the country. So let's select a few countries that we want to, the data for whom we want to see the order data. And once we have this, now we can start visualizing the data. So let's bring the category, country, sales revenue. So applying the filters minimizes the amount of data that you're querying from OBI. And when you, when BI Connector creates the query that is sent, passed along to OBI, it adds the filters. And so it minimizes the data that is being brought back from OBI. So you can quickly see the data. This is a live query. So only the data that you are actually need, that you need for this visualization is fetched from OBI. So direct query is very efficient in that manner. The, we work very closely with, with the Power BI team to optimize the query that goes from Power BI to OBI here. So, and you can of course change the visualizations and all that as just like any other data source in Power BI. So this is the, the subject area uh, accessing the reports using direct query. Now let's look at how to connect
to reports using import. So the same approach works here. So do a get data. Go to BI connector. Dev report, you enter the DSN for the report, choose import instead of direct query this time. Click OK. So Power BI caches the credentials for that particular data source, so you don't need to re-enter it. So next step is go here. You will see the again, once again, see the list of reports. So let's choose the same European orders. Now, in the case of import, the first step is to edit the query to apply the filters before you bring in the data. So let's click on edit. So this brings up the Power Query editor. So let's apply a filter here. So let's bring data from five countries. So this is going to update the query that is being sent from Power BI to OBI. Once you have applied the filter, now you can just close and apply it. So the data is fetched from OBI into Power BI. So, and from here on, you can do kind of an offline analysis of the data. It's not only if you need to refresh, you can apply the refresh, click on the refresh button to fetch the latest data. So let's do the same kind of analysis here. So let's bring category, company, sales revenue, quantity, and it's much faster because the data is already loaded, but the prerequisite is that you apply the filters in the Power Query to bring the right set of data into Power BI. And of course, from here on, this becomes another data set that is available for you in Power BI, and you can use it with other data sources and combine it with other data sources. So we saw how to connect uh, to OBI reports. So now let's go back to the presentation. So what if you would like to create a new report from scratch directly from the OBI subject areas? We can definitely do that, even though I cautioned you against that, but we can definitely do that. But because of the way Power BI works, connecting to subject area requires a few extra steps. So we recommend this approach only for OBI super users who understand the subject areas very well. So here's what you need to do. If you're using direct query, you need to create a relationship between the fact table and the dimension tables using the field GZID, which is a virtual ID created by BI Connector. Defining this simple relationship does a few things. One, you don't need to recreate the OBIE joins in Power BI, but rather you can reuse the existing OBIE joins. Two, you don't need to expose any primary key foreign key relationships in the OBI presentation layer. You can connect to OBI subject areas out of the box. Three, Power BI will send a single query to the fact and dimension tables instead of sending multiple queries to the subject area. So when you create the relationship, you should always set the cardinality to many to one and also the cross filter direction to be single. So you can see GZID, GZID, and you can say, okay, and you will do that. So let's see a quick demo of how to do this. So let's bring up BI Connector, BI Connector. Let's enter the ESN corresponding to OBI subject area. Let's use direct query. So this will display the subject areas that are available to this particular user OBI test. So let's pick the Northwind subject area. Let's pick the fact table, which is the order details table. Let's choose customers, orders, and products. So here you don't have to do any edit. You can just do a load here. It's Since it's direct query, it's not loading any data from the fact or the dimension tables. It's just loading the metadata at this point. So once the tables become visible here, we will go to the step of creating the relationship between the fact and the dimension tables. So the tables are visible. So let's go to the modeler here and just connect, quickly connect GZID from the fact table to the dimension table customers. 
okay choose gzid in both and then choose the cardinality always to many to one okay and then this cross filter direction to be single say okay now go to the next table connect the fact table to the next dimension table And let's connect the last dimension table here. So consistently use the same cardinality many to one and a single cross filter direction and say, okay. So now that you have set up the relationship, this is uh, just to help Power BI understand that it shouldn't send three, four different queries, but rather a single query to OBIE. So, and BI connector will transform that query into an OBI query. So now you can come here and then you can just, you can visualize the data. So let's do a city. Let's bring the order details corresponding to that. Let's bring a quantity. And let's bring the sales revenue. So, and of course you can fill, apply filters here as per your, as per the best practice. So once you have the data, you can quickly see the data, actual data. So with the direct query, you can easily connect to subject area, just create the relationships, and it becomes, since you're not loading all the data in one shot into Power BI, it makes it like, it makes it an ad hoc analysis. You can do an ad hoc analysis on your subject area and create the reports. So let's go back to the presentation. Next, if you are using import instead of direct query, you need to merge the fact table and the dimension tables into a single flat table before you load the data. So if you don't do this, Power BI will send separate queries to the fact and the dimension tables, and you will not be able to join the results in Power BI because often the primary and foreign key relationships are not available in the OBI presentation layer. So let's see a quick demo of how to do this. So let's connect to OBI using the import option. So let's bring up BI connector here. Let's choose the import. Let's go through Northwind. Let's choose order details and customers, two tables. So before you do a load, you need to do an edit, which will bring up the Power Query Editor. So here you can apply a filter on the customers. Let's say we want to filter by country. And then the next step is to go into the fact table and then do a merge query. So you click on merge query here and then connect the fact table to the dimension table. Again, use GZID and always use the join kind uh, to be left outer. So click OK. And one additional step that you can do is that you might have, your table might have several tens of uh, columns, fields. So you, don't, you might not need all the fields for your data set. So let's go and select a few data columns that you absolutely need. And region. So, okay. Now, since we have already merged the customer table with the order table, we no longer need to load this. So uncheck enable load and just go back to the order details, do a close and apply. And this is going to fetch that modified query, run the modified query in OBI, fetch the data with us as a single flat table into Power BI. So let's give it a few seconds to bring the data into Power BI. So you can see the difference between this direct query approach and the import approach. Import, the direct query is very live, interactive querying into OBI. If your OBI system performs well, direct query is very efficient in getting the data from OBI into Power BI. Import, on the other hand, is good if you have long running queries, if your queries are, if you just want to get the data and then do the visualization in uh, OB, Power BI. I should have put more filters on this. Okay, it's loaded. Okay, all right, so the data is here. So let's look at the data. 
So the data has, brought, has been brought in. So now we have the data so we can look at the order count or the sales revenue, quantity, etc. Keep in mind, uh, we recommend this approach for uh, connecting to the subject areas, primarily for OBI super users, because there's some additional complexity. You need to know what subject area, you, how your subject area is modeled, what data is in it, how to pick the right, uh, you know, uh, kind of the, how to pick the right tables to form the relationships and all that. So that's why we recommend it specifically for the OBI super users. Now let's continue with the presentation. Let's discuss how to handle challenging reports, which are either long running or fetch large data volumes. The first one is let's look at the long running queries. For example, if you're fetching financial data or uh, support data, for example, for many years, depending on the load on your OBI system, the query could take sometimes more than 10 minutes to complete. So if, you're noticed, if you notice that the query returns without any data after running for several minutes, then the culprit could be the default timeouts. The first step is to run the report in OBI and check the time it takes to complete. If it is more than eight minutes, then adjust the HTTP timeout parameter in BI connector settings to a higher number, say 30 minutes. So the default value is eight minutes, so adjust it to a higher value. So even after adjusting this parameter, if you notice query cancel message or the data query doesn't return any data and there is a, you see a query cancel message in the BI connector log file, then you should check with your OBI administrator for query timeout settings in the OBI. It's quite likely so that there are some default values in OBI that is automatically canceling the query after a certain period of time. So now the next scenario is if you're querying large volumes of data. So the data volume is a combination of number of fields and the number of rows. So your OBI system is sized to export a certain volume of data. If the data being queried exceeds this value, your OBI system will automatically error out. So if you see a C runtime error in OBI's query log or in BI connector log file, you have a few options. Number one, you can reduce the number of fields you are querying. Pick only those fields that you absolutely need for your report. Second, number, reduce the number of records per fetch so that BI connector fetches fewer records per fetch, but makes multiple fetches to complete the report. So the, in the example that we, or the demo that we saw earlier, where we were connecting using the import to get the data, the default value in BI connector is 50,000. So it was able to fit the data in one fetch. So if there were say 90,000 records, it would have done since the default value is 50,000 here. So it would have first fetched 50,000 records, then gone back to OBI and fetch the next 40,000 rows into Power BI. So you can, BI connector is flexible enough and you can configure these parameters to handle that. It will take longer, depend on the time it takes to query the data from Power BI into Power BI, it depends on two factors. One, your OBI system performance. Second, how large the data volume is. So depending upon how many chunks of data that it is breaking it up into and then bringing it into Power BI. And the third thing that you need to verify is the maximum number of records per report. So if you have, uh, if you're running a query which returns, which is supposed to return say 200,000 rows, but you have max number of rows per report in the BI connector configuration is 100,000, then BA connector will stop after 100,000. So it's designed, this parameter is set, is available to limit the impact on OBI. So you have to modify it or you have to customize it to based on your uh, requirement. So, and the last thing that you should also check for VC runtime errors in OBI queries is to check the memory allocation in your OBI system. So you need to configure these values based on your requirement and the OBI environment. So we have come to the final best practice, which involves data governance in the Power BI service, the Power BI cloud. So when you publish OBI data to Power BI service, either through the direct query or through the import in the cloud, the OBI security model is not automatically carried over to the data connection or the published data set. 
So the Power BI currently doesn't support a cloud user to automatically log into OBI using their own OBI credentials. So therefore, the data set is published using a common service OBI service account. And just like any other Power BI data set, you should define the security and governance model for who can see this data or who's, who the data set is shared with. So that wraps up the list of best practices. So let's do a quick recap. So the first one is know your OBI, form a core team consisting of OBI super users and Tableau super users. You need, or I'm sorry, Power BI super users. You need them both for your integration process. Always connect to the reports first. This will jumpstart your visualization. Choose the right connection type, whether it is direct query or import for the right use case. Always use filters to manage data volume. When connecting to subject areas, use GZID to create relationship between fact and dimension tables. If your query fails to return any data set, check your query timings and the data volume. Adjust the BI connector and OBI parameters based on your requirement and the OBI environment. Finally, when publishing OBI data to the cloud, be sure to define data security and governance model just like any other Power BI data set. So by following these simple best practices, you can simplify your transition from Power BI OBI to Power BI for visualization. The important benefit is that you will eliminate hours and days of manual error prone export import of OBI data into Power BI. And if you are an IT manager, you save time and money by reusing the OBI subject areas and reports. Connecting to power, connecting Power BI to OBI eliminates the need for costly, time consuming re-engineering and testing. So overall, both the end users and the IT benefit from the productivity and cost savings of connecting Power BI to OBI.